Hey, what's up? Bob Debu here for Open Studio. We're gonna talk about triad pairs today and how to actually use them, some good ways to practice them, why we might wanna use them, uh, how to creatively integrate them into some solo ideas. And uh, I just wanted to start off by, you know, there's a lot of videos out there explaining what triad pairs are, right? It's a pretty simplistic concept. Triad, three notes. Watch our previous video on uh, it, expanding your triads and really musical triad exercise. But then a pair of triads is when you combine two triads to make a certain sound. Three times two is six, which gives you a hexatonic scale, okay? Which is another way to say this. Hexatonic triad pairs, like pentatonic is five, but hexatonic is six. Anyways, I remember when I first heard somebody using uh, triad pairs uh, or the hexatonic type of idea and it opened up my ears in a, in a way different way like as it as it was it had to be explained to me because I didn't understand what it was I was hearing it was a sax player that explained it to me uh, of course anyways so I had been coming from a solo you know on the bass trying to come at soloing from entirely like a melodic trying to hear melodies which is great of course that was really where I was trying to come from and uh, also from scale ideas, you know, like using scales. Okay, you use this scale over this chord. For instance, we're gonna like study an F13 chord today where you could play F mixolydian, right? And it would work. And then we're also gonna look at an F13 flat five, flat nine. You could use the half whole diminished scale over all of that, right? Anyways, triad pairs breaks that up in uh, some more angular type of ways and you can make some interesting melodies and uh, when that door was open for me, uh, you know, it just, I was like, oh, cool. This is great. You know, like this is some new ideas that I can do that aren't simply using scales, which were starting to sound a little, you know, like uh, rigid. You know what I mean? I would use the same patterns a bunch. And, and triad pairs can definitely be overused too. So I wanted to, uh, even before we start now, I want to say that you can use these triad pairs in conjunction with scales and other melodic devices. Don't think, you know, play however you like, but don't think just triad pairs over something or just scales over something. We have all these different ideas that we can use, arpeggios, you know, and that's just note choice wise, right? So the other thing that dawned on me too in this, it was pretty much the same conversation, was that sounds can change, right? So we're gonna look at two different chords. I was saying F13, F7 flat nine, flat five, um, but basically, that's kind of the idea of uh, thinking the first four bars of a blues. A lot of times you'll have, say, an F blues, F7, B flat 7, F7, F7, you know, and not always. That's just like the most stock way to do it. But in the back end of those four bars, a lot of times we'll put in some dissonance because that's leading towards the four chord. OK, well, I don't want to get too far into that. But basically to say that one sound can evolve into the other, depending on what the soloist is doing or what the harmonic player is doing. Say the pianist is playing, okay, there's that F13 chord, you know, and you could sit there for those four bars. Or you could change it around, you know, like wherever it makes sense to or wherever somebody's hearing it. So all that to say, we're gonna practice this stuff today to open up our ears, to be able to play better bass lines and understand what it is we're hearing soloists or uh, anybody else play so that we can respond in kind as bass players and to also help to elevate our solo, melodic, compositional melody ideas, uh, a bunch of ways we can do this, okay? So again, take your triad pairs and mix and match them. We'll practice them. We're about to practice them a bunch and, um, and mix them with scales and also realize that you can add in chromaticism in a few different ways and we'll talk about that as well. But let's get into it. Our first exercise that we're going to check out is, again, over this F13. Okay, so what is F13? Let's talk about that first. F13, it's a dominant seventh chord with a 13th on top. Okay, that's a, what we refer to as an upper structure. It's higher than the root, the third, the fifth, or the seventh, which is F, A, C, E flat. If we keep going up another third, we would hit the ninth. So. It was explained to me a long time ago that ninth is in there. If you see an F13, it's going to have the ninth in there as well. Not always, but it's kind of implied that it can be in there. Okay. Um, if you saw a chord symbol that said flat nine, then you would obviously change that to a G flat. But in this case, F13 has a ninth and the 13th, which is a sixth. So the sixth, one, two, three, four, five, 
negative six. Right now, I was just thinking the uh, Mixolydian scale, F Mixolydian, the sixth degree is D. Okay? So that's also the 13th. It's interchangeable. It's just if we talk about upper structures, that's where the 13th comes in. Okay, cool. What are our triad pairs? This video is about triad pairs. I'm still talking. The two triad pairs we're going to put over F13 are C minor and D minor. There are multi, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that we can think about triad pairs, and there are uh, so many different options. We're just talking about these specific ones today, but by all means, explore, do research, find your own. These are the ones that work for today, what we're going to practice. So in F13, if we think C minor, we have C, which is the fifth of F13, E flat, which is the seventh of F7, F13. There's that G, which is the ninth, the natural ninth. All right, so that's our C minor triad, right? Now, D minor triad. That D immediately gets you the 13th sound right there, or the sixth, again, they're interchangeable. D to F is the root, and then A is the third of F7, or F13, okay? So let's practice in this way. We're gonna play these triads, C minor, D minor, and then put them in first inversion, so C minor starting on E flat, cool, then D minor starting on F and going up, now second inversion, those same triads, C minor starting on G, now D minor starting on A, cool, so again we have C minor, D minor, C minor, D minor, C minor, D minor thinking about them in different ways. So if we practice these descending, they're going the same direction, but we're ascending up the bass, if that makes sense. Now let's do it this way. So we're playing D minor, this way. Now C minor, that's second inversion. Now D minor and second inversion going up, C minor and second inversion going up, D minor, right, and C minor. So it's two different ways. Let's put that all together. We're gonna go up, Two, three, four. Let's go back down. Two, three, four. D minor and C minor. Cool. So let's flip those triads over now. Here's C minor descending. But now go up to D minor and descend on that triad. C minor, same idea. Keep going. Cool, let's play that going down. Okay, so just to reiterate, we're going, we went earlier, we went up. This time we were flipping that direction of each of those triads, but still going up. Cool? Excellent. Now let's do a thing where we bounce back and forth between those directions. So we'll play the C minor triad going up, the D minor going down, C minor going up, D minor going down, C minor going up, D minor going down. Let's flip that for when we're descending on the bass. So do D minor going up, second inversion, flip. See how that works? And it's all over this, which is really important to be able to hear that, right? Okay, so I've got a little play along here that's gonna play the chords. We can hear it in real time. Let's try these exercises with the chords happening so we can hear how it's related. Here we go. So. Here's the F13 sound, just from iReal Pro, this is a little app. Um, that's the root of this chord, right? It's important to keep that in mind. Let's try this first exercise where we're playing all our triads going up. You ready? One, two, three, go. Let's play that same shape going down. So D minor, C minor. Now let's play those all descending. One, 
two, three, four. C minor, D minor, C minor, D minor, C minor, D minor. Play the same shape going down. Go. Cool. Now let's do the thing where we pivot back and forth between them. We'll play C minor going up, D minor going down. You could also play this whole thing flipped over where you start descending and then go ascending. You'll start to see more options the more we get into this, right? So let's try it. Two, three, go. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Let's do our D minor now going up and we'll do C minor coming down. One, two, three, go. Cool. So let's look at this next little snippet. Still on F13, it's going to combine the C minor triad with the D minor triad, still just ascending in a very logical and organized way. We are practicing these like we would practice them as scales. Don't, pra don't play solos just like this. This is like we're practicing just to get these sounds in our ears and under our fingers. But again, you want to utilize different scales, rhythm, syncopation, rests, obviously articulation, chromaticism. There's a bunch of options to further elaborate on this triad sound. We're just trying to get them in our ears and under our fingers. So here is the next lick I want to look at. It's C minor. We're going to start on E flat, go down to C, up to E flat again, and then up to the fifth, which is G. It's the fifth of C minor triad, not the fifth of F13. Do the same thing now to the D minor triad. So start on the third. Good. Now the same thing. Keep going up. So we've got that shape going on. Just like that. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. Cool. Let's try it with that backing track too so we can hear how it sounds against the chords. Let's try this with our track now so we can hear how it sounds. Two, three, go. Cool. It's a si simplistic type of idea, right? So you can break this up, you can play around with it. An idea on that might be something like this. Three, four. it around right that's really the idea so I recommend sitting on this sound for a while playing around with these triads really getting them in your ear you can do that out of time you can do that in time but just check out these shapes check out these two triads play with them get them in your ears and we're gonna move on to the next sound and work on combining these sounds or evolving from the F13 into the F13 flat 9 flat 5 okay so let's get right into the F 13, flat 9, flat 5. I remember hearing this sound, too, from that same sax player. And oftentimes, this gets played this way. Um, just to get started, that's the, the opening kind of, kind of riff uh, idea. But it explains the triad pair perfectly. It's a, on an F13, we're going to play the F major triad. So we did two minors. Now we're doing two majors. So F major. And then B, the tritone of F. Okay, so why do we want to play that over F13 flat 9 flat 5? That's the root 3rd and 5th. And on B, that's the flat 5. D sharp is inharmonic with E flat. So D sharp is the 7th of F7. Okay, so you'll see this written different ways. Major triad, D sharp is the 3rd of B major. If I'm thinking F7, E flat is the seventh of F7. So that's how it sounds, you know what I mean? Right there. And then, of course, F sharp is the flat nine, which we can also, that's the, okay, so F sharp is the fifth of B major triad. In harmonically, it's G flat, which is technically the flat nine. Okay, cool. F major, B major. All right, okay, so sorry. let's get into practicing some of this now. What we're going to do, since we started in C minor for our F13 sound, I wanted to start 
in second inversion with our F major triad. Second inversion means we're starting on the fifth. First inversion would be we're starting on the, the third. Root position would mean we're starting on the root. Here we're going to start in second inversion, so we're going to play C, C, F, A, okay? Now we'll move that up to the B major triad and play D sharp or E flat, F sharp or G flat, and then B natural, okay? And then keep going up. So now F major again, B major, A, A C, F, which is the F major triad, and then B major again, okay? Let's try it again. So one, two, three, four, F, B, F, B, F, B. And that's the root of where we're at, right? Okay, so cool, that's the idea. Let's take the same tactic that we used on the F13 with the C minor and the D minor triad pairs with this, and we'll play um, them descending. We've got the F major triad, B major, F major, B major, F major, B major. So it's a different pattern, different shape of it, but it's still the same information. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. F major, B, F major, and B. That gets you back there. Okay? And again, if you'd like a refresher on your triads, things like that, check out our musical, the musical uh, triad exercise from last week on, the, on Open Studio's YouTube channel. And if you're into this too, we practice stuff just like this at the Bass Access Pass regularly um, with uh, basses from all over the world that come together in a Zoom class and it's interactive, a lot of fun, and we get into some real life practicing situations. And on top of that, you get access to all the amazing bass courses at Open Studio jazz.com so can't recommend it highly enough if you're into this check it out at least do yourself a favor it's really really cool okay let's do the same thing now where we play our triads we're gonna go up and we're gonna go down ascend into the next two go back down just like what we did on F13 let's try it so we're gonna go up F in second inversion so C F A down the B triad so we're going from A up to B that way cool so again that's F B, go up the F triad, go up to the D sharp of the B triad, cool, now up to the A of the F triad, and then up to the F sharp of the B triad. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four. Cool, makes sense? Let's try that over the F13 flat 9 flat 5 sound so we can hear how it correlates to the actual chord. 2, 3, 4. Sounds good, right? Let's go back. Let's go back earlier and play those first two triads ascending. So we'll do F to B going up. Here, like this. 1, 2, 3, go. them where they're changing direction now. So we'll go up F, down B, up F, down B. So one, two, three, go. Let's play them where they're just descending now. So F and then B. So one, two, three, go. right into this next exercise it's like what we did on the F13 sound but we're gonna pivot we're gonna go middle low middle high middle low middle high if that makes sense like this okay cool I'll count you in this time ready one two three go Let's try it again. So 
one, two, three, go. And of course that's fairly slow right now. We're only at 90 beats per minute. Of course, play it faster. We're just trying to get the concept together. And uh, then we want to mix and match both of these sounds. So again, we're going to go back and forth between the F13 sound and then the F13 flat 9, flat 5. And why are we doing it in that direction? Because of the tension of that diminished sounding chord. Again, you could play on the F13, you could play all mixolydian, or you could break it up with these triad pairs. You could play arpeggios, you could play a bunch of different things, obviously. And you can alter things too using chromaticism. But then going into the more dissonant sound of the flat 9 scale. Okay, and when I say the flat 9 scale, I'm talking about half whole diminished which is also the scale that you would play over that F13, flat 9, flat 5. You could see this written a bunch of different ways. It could also just be written as F7, flat 9. It could be F7, flat 5. It really does imply that scale for the most part. There are exceptions, but that's generally like where my mind goes when I see some type of flat 9 chord. Okay, so here is the next exercise I want to get into really quick. All right, and it's combining both of those different chord sounds with this this uh, most recent middle, low, middle, high uh, triad uh, organization that we were just doing. So it's like this, over the F13, here's the C minor triad, right? So middle, low, middle, high. Now for the D minor, do the same thing. Now for the C minor, do the same thing. D minor. Now we're switching into the B major triad, F major triad, B major triad again, and then end on F. All right, so try it with me again. One, two, three, four. There's, hear the chord change? Great, let's try it with our play along so we can hear how the, the sound evolves. Two, three, go. Again. Now just improvise. Here's the change of sound, right? the F13 sound, D minor, C minor, B major, F. So, and then play around with some scale ideas in there. That's the Mixolydian flat nine sound now, which has changed in the triads together, if that makes sense, right? So C minor, D minor on this sound, now B and F on this sound. Try it out. Play around, C minor, D minor. Your different inversions, put in some rests, syncopations. Now here's that B and the F sound. I'm gonna try some. different sounds that you can play around with, right? So click the link downstairs and get the PDF of all the information that we've been practicing today. You can also get this practice track so you can practice shedding this sound, changing, using these different triad pairs. So thanks so much for watching. Again, my name is Bob Debu. I hope you enjoyed our practice session. Please take it a step further. If you have any comments or questions about anything that we're, we're doing here, please let me know downstairs. I read all of the stuff and I will definitely respond as well. Um, so happy practicing and see you next time. Peace.